All right, so we're going to do a real quick video here talking about a dual monitor setup. And so normally when I'm sitting here recording videos, I'm actually looking at two screens and I have OBS on one and if I'm Twitch streaming, you know, I get my chat box and everything else. But uh, this is kind of what I'm looking at, right? And so, but when I'm working, not doing YouTube videos, I'm actually utilizing that other screen as like a little mini control panel for Blender or Unreal Engine, Unity, whatever. And I always branch out to that other window there uh, to make working a little bit easier. So uh, here in Blender, what you want to do is you want to actually uh, do window, new window. I'm going to do this on the layout tab, by the way, and I'm going to drag it over. OK, so turning this into a little mini control panel, I kind of just mentioned this in the last video, but a lot of times I find myself doing like a uh, properties window, an outliner. And then this one over here, uh, you can set up a multitude of different ways, but you could change it into like the asset browser, for example. I got a couple of little placeholder characters. And so now if I'm working in a scene, right, and I want to uh, just drag and drop a character in to get some scale reference, I can do that. Not a big deal. And it's just right there. It's ready to go. I don't have to worry about nothing. There's also that program I mentioned in another video called Connector. I'll often have this over here on this window as well. Um, in case I need to get to anything. So Connector acts like a big asset browser for your whole system, as opposed to just looking for Blender files in the structure that you set up. So, which is quite nice because now I can just get into, like, uh, if I wanted to go to, like, my images or something, open those up. You'll see I have all kinds of photos here. And so maybe I want to look at my Alcatraz photos or something, right? So now I could do that. I like my junkyard pictures. And things like that so i can always like pull these into blender if i needed to as well and uh, not a big deal the unfortunate side effect of this though is i really need three monitors in my opinion it's kind of different ways i want to work with more space i would probably go for four at this point it would probably be real nice but because if you're doing any kind of like programming and you got to do like debugs or anything like that you really need just that little extra screen kind of go you know but anyways so blender dual monitor we're going to get rid of connectors just for a moment this is still extremely useful um, because a lot of times I find myself doing like UV editing, like this is super cramped up, right? Like this just doesn't work for me here. And uh, what should happen here is if you switch tabs, it doesn't do nothing at first, but in the UV editing, if we were to go back over here and change this to um, UV editor and just start joining these back together, it's going to only change this for the UV editor or should anyways. So when we go back to layout, you'll see it pops back over, right? And so now we have this going on. So I can have a full screen to work with my models, whatever the case may be. Not a big deal. If I need to go in and I'm just going to smart project this real quick. You'll see that I can actually work with the UV editor over here as well. Now it does have a little kind of uh, weird behavior that sometimes you got to just pay attention to and work with. And that's going to be the simple fact that a lot of times you'll have to still um, like if you're working over here and you come over here to work, you might end up having to um, just click in the window sometimes to get things to start working over here. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. It's just kind of weird how it behaves. It's also like the shading tab. Personally, I like to see uh, my full setup here with the um, the node window. And over here, I'll turn this into a uh, 3D viewport. Set it up like so. This usually uses the uh, EV render settings. So you turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, switch it over to material preview. You can turn all this other stuff off for the most part. And uh, that's what you're going to have there. So now if I grab this guy, you'll see here, um, grab him, just click new, add a new material, and turn the uh, roughness down and metallic up. Okay, so there we go. And that starts to make sense. So the EV tab actually uh, change like the A B to occlusion, bump it up, do something like that maybe. All right, and last but not least, I don't like the default HDRI image, so you can swap it to something else if you want. Maybe turn that bloom down. And so, now you can get a good material preview going with uh, EV settings. 
also if you're working and you for example um, a lot of guys like to use bevel modifiers I'll do that in this window I'll do a 3d view switch it over to uh, the render tab wait before we go to render tab switch this to cycles and for performance, I drop the amount of cores here. So you change performance to fixed, and I'll just use eight threads. So now this render, if I switch it over to render preview, we won't use the scene lighting. We'll do it the same way as like preview EV. Okay, you can turn all that extra crap off. So this is a cycles preview. Depends on how big you want this. You hit control B. Control B will draw a little clipping, cropping box, clipping box, I don't know what you call it, but a boundary. So it's only rendering inside this box, all this excess outside of it, uh, for whatever reason, still takes time to render. So this is a little bit faster and more efficient. So now you can get like a good preview going. And because a lot of guys like to use a bevel shader, um, I'll switch the asset browser over to shading real quick. Sometimes I'll just leave shading open over here. But you can add in things like the input bevel. You can plug that into normal. Change the amount here. Change it like 0 0.02 or something. But all that does is add a bevel shader, basically, uh, to your object. In this case, he's really, he used to be sharpened, I think. What's going on? He's kind of blurry, huh? Let's turn it off and back on and see if that helps. Point zero one. Uh, it's just too too much there. So like point zero zero five maybe. Yeah. So now you get the idea. You can do this as well. But as you're working in the 3D view, you know you can make your modifications and adjustments. Oh, and one thing I want to mention is I am using an add-on called sync UV, uh, sync workspaces or whatever um, in this case because i modified this workspace for whatever reason it modifies this workspace and so you can modify that so that it will or will not sync certain types of workspaces i'm going to turn it all off just for a second because this one got rid of my ability to see what the heck's going on here a little bit all right so you can further refine this if you don't need animation timeline you can get rid of that um, I'm not going to be using these now because, well, no point. They're on the other window there, at least in this view. So now when we go over to um, Shading tab, you'll see we have it set up like so. So I can work with my nodes, not worry about it. Got everything here if I need it. So you can customize every tab, basically. If you create custom tabs, you can set them up however you see fit. And so... This is extremely useful uh, just to get work done, right? And if you go through and customize all this and configure it just the way you want uh, before you even get started with a new Blender file, you can save this as a default startup and you'll always have it every time, right? There's a reason why I don't actually do that. And um, part of me wants to, part of me doesn't, but at the same time, it's also advisable to like in your modeling folder somewhere, you know, just have like a like a, a default setup file somewhere and um, just save that so whenever you're out of blender now if I was to hit control Q get out of it relaunch it up if I'm gonna start a new project a lot of times it's easy to just like get in here and just start working but if I ever want that kind of more intrinsic setup there I can just go and load it up you'll see it all comes back right so it saves with your blender file which is the most important aspect there so I don't have to worry about reconfiguring this every time um, and the same is true with your sculpting tools by the way if you didn't know this when you start sculpting and you create uh, custom tools here a lot of times you got to use this little window here you got to duplicate them Let's name it something else like new tool you'll see that that actually creates your new tool right when you modify it and so when you save this Blender file somewhere, right, and let's say you had a new document open, 
right, like that. You want to import that new tool. You have to still append your sculpt tool. And you'll see that we have under brushes, we have all the different sculpting tools here, right? But you'll find all the originals, which is kind of problematic. So if you name all your new ones with like a prefix or something like that, it's easier to find them. But you should find new tool here somewhere. There it is. I can actually import just that sculpting tool, which is nice. So you can set up a, a wide range of things there. But you have to really think about what you're doing, basically, because it's um, Blender works really good in a lot of ways. Um, but just importing tools like that is kind of... I kind of wish they would just... Um, get it going like this, right? So, like, you know how you can bring mat caps in? I should be able to bring in uh, a file path for alphas. That would be nice. And Sculpt Alphas Manager is an add-on that's free that kind of does that. And um, But it would be nice for the tools as well to be able to just look for a folder with all the tools in it. And so it saves outside of the Blender file, basically, is what I'm getting at. Well, at least the one you're working in. So you can have like a blender shelf. Like that's really, I think, what they're going for here. At some point, they're going to kind of get this fully going. I'm hoping, where they'll have like a more or less like a blender shelf, something like Substance Painter. You know, it has a shelf permanently store things in there. It's not part of the Blender scene. It's just you have to like load it into Blender um, and configure Blender for it. Same as Substance, right? So all in all, uh, if you want to use Blender this way, I highly recommend it. Like it's it's super efficient be able to just like work on something and say like you need to change your shading node if you have a real complicated shader node like you got tons of space now to work with this you don't have to worry about getting um like fighting with the user interface anymore like once you get it going it's it's super efficient and it's it's a lot of fun too because this uv editor is now extremely usable as opposed to uh the way it was right because when you have that little tab open it's just so small that it's uh it's problematic you're constantly trying to see things and you know you want to select something move it way over here well you zoom you feel like you're zoomed in when you have a smaller screen space right so then it's like oh i gotta zoom out now those little things add up especially if you're doing a lot of work because you might want to just be able to see things super clear so you can just kind of run around and figure out what can go where and how that one there, this one here, I don't know. There's a lot of space we can utilize that just not being used right now. Scale it a little bit. All right. All right. So, did that go outside the, oh, I thought it was outside the UV space. It looked like it kind of, like, that's kind of weird. All right. And so. There you have it. All right. So that's all I wanted to make this video about because it's extremely useful. You know, if, when you're trying to like do work, like you're trying to get work done, you don't want to fight with this user interface any more than you have to. So customizing it, in my opinion, is much needed um, and really, really should think about doing that because it's as good as it is as a single user or a single uh, window program. Dual monitor is always going to just free you up to uh, use it more efficiently. So keep that in mind. So now you can see we're, we're starting to have some pretty cool things going on here that we can make better use of. All right. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will check you guys out in the next one. All right. Take care.